Hello, good day everyone. So welcome to our first lecture for our subject Science, Technology and the Society or also known as GNED 06. So let us start. So for our first topic, we're going to talk about science and technology in the world. So if you have browsed uh, the syllabus that I have sent you, um, the first topics that we're going to talk about is how science and technology develop or sprouted in the different parts of the world. And then eventually, as we go on, we're going to move deeper into the Philippine setting on how science, technology, and the society affects an individual. So how science affects technology, how technology affects the society, how society affects science, so on and so forth. Okay, so let's start with our first topic. So, the science and technology in the world starts off first with, of course, the ancient age or the three-age system. It is considered as the categorization of history into different time period or different timelines. So, let's say, for example, how a simple caveman develop, adopt, or even evolve either physically, mentally, and even socially in order for them to survive. Okay. So the three-age system, or this categorization, was formulated during the 19th century in the National Museum of Denmark. Probably you're wondering why National Museum. It's all because of this man. We have Christian Jurgensen Thompson. So Christian Jurgensen Thompson. Is lang nyo lang yung dila nyo. It's Christian Jurgensen Thompson. Okay? So he is a curator, also an archaeologist. A curator is someone who works for a museum, and then an archaeologist, someone who studies or, or someone who is considered to be an expert when it comes to fossils or artifacts. So an a curator or an archaeologist at the museum. So according to Thompson, he said that this system, the three-age system, this system was formulated to classify artifacts based on the materials that they were made of. Again, based on the materials that they were made of. So it is not based on what time, what timeline, what era they were developed, but rather they were uh, organized based on the materials they were made of. Okay. Hence, our three-age system, we have the Iron Age, the Bronze Age, and the Iron Age. So again, the three age system, the Stone Age, the Bronze Age, and the Iron Age. Again, going back to what Christian Jurgensen Thompson, medyo slang, sabi niya, it is based on the materials. It was categorized based on the materials. So obviously, the materials or the most common materials used during the Stone Age was, of course, can you guess? Very good. Stone. Kaya nga, Stone Age. Then, the next age, we have the Bronze Age. So, can you guess what material was used? It was bronze. And then, for the Iron Age, the material used was, of course, iron. So, Stone Age, Bronze Age, and Iron Age. Okay? So, next, I'm going to show you a timeline of the Three Age System. So this is the timeline from the Stone Age to the Iron Age, okay? So from this line up to here, this is considered as the Stone Age, okay? So it's kind of long. Then this one starting here up to here, this is our Bronze Age. And then this one, the shortest, the, small, uh, the shortest one, from here to here, that is our Iron Age. Again, going back to what Christian Thompson Jurgensen said, the materials used during the Stone Age was, of course, stone. For bronze, it was bronze. For Iron Age, it was iron. Okay. Probably you're wondering why is the Stone Age much longer compared to bronze and iron okay because they still use the trial and error method when you say trial and error method probably some 
individuals before, they will gather materials or food to eat in order for them to survive. Not knowing that those materials or food, fruits, vegetables are uh, can cause harm towards their body. So that's why it's called trial and error. They still don't know what to do. Okay, They're trying to experience things. So again, why is the Stone Age uh, much longer compared to the bronze and the iron? It's because of the trial and error method. Okay. So next, let's start first with the Stone Age. Okay. I'll just move my picture. Kasi hindi siya nababasa. Lagay natin dito ang mukha ko. Okay. Ayan. So the Stone Age. Weapons were made up of, of course, obviously the stones. And then woods and some bones. Probably you're wondering, sir, saan po galing yung bones? Of course, from animals, okay? So some of the examples we have here, we have some of the weapons that they were uh, that they used before. So you have some spears, some axes, some clubs. Then, I just ulit natin yung aking pagbumuka kasi naharangan ng ating picture. Okay, there you go. So here, second picture. You can focus here. Those are huts. Okay. Probably nipa huts, but let's just call them huts. When you say huts, bahay, bahay kubo, or any kind of shelter that can be easily made. Okay. Any kind of shelter that can be easily made. Sir, bakit kailangan madaling buuin? Kasi before, they have to find a location or a place that is either near uh, a source of water or source of food. So, let's say, for example, in area A, maraming pagkain, maraming inumin. So, they will stay there, let's say, for a month, a two, or a three, uh, three months. And then, once the resources are gone, they have to find a new area. Let's say, area B, kung saan, again, marami again source ng food and source of uh, water. Okay? So, that is the reason why the materials used for their huts are just uh, lightweight materials. Yung madaling buuin and also madaling sirain. Okay? Third picture. Let's focus here. So, we have here. So, this is not an elephant. This is actually the ancestor of the elephants. We have the mammoths. So, you can see... Uh, the individuals before, during the Stone Age, they were trying to what? Yes, spear the mammoth. Okay? Not knowing that the mammoth can actually hurt them in the process. Kaya nga sabi ko kanina, it's a trial and error method. Okay? And then on the fourth picture, we have some cave art or ca uh, cave, pa uh, cave paintings. So later on, we're going to discuss uh, why are they... Uh, wa what is the reason behind those cave arts or cave paintings before? Okay, bakit may cow? Bakit may horses? Okay. So next slide. Next, we have John Lubbock. So John Lubbock, he was the one who introduced the division between the Paleolithic and Neolithic in his book of Prehistoric Times. Sir, what is Paleolithic and Neolithic? Um, the stone, remember we have the three age system, the stone age, um, the bronze age, and the iron age. Okay, we can further divide the stone age, the first age, or the first era into three. We have the paleolithic, the mesolithic, and the neolithic. Okay, again, the, uh, the stone age is subdivided into three, the paleolithic, the mesolithic, and the neolithic. Okay, and then Paleolithic, the first one, and then Neolithic, the third one, was introduced or was proposed by John Lubbock. Okay, and then the middle part of the Stone Age was introduced by this man, John Allen Brown. He introduced the division of Mesolithic. So again, the three age system is the Stone Age, the Bronze Age, and the Iron Age, and then the Stone Age, the first era or the uh, the first age system, was further subdivided into three. We have the Paleolithic, the first one, Mesolithic, Neolithic. Paleolithic and Neolithic was introduced by John Lubbock, and then the middle one or the second one, Mesolithic, 
was introduced by this man, John Allen Brown. Okay? Again, probably you're wondering, sir, it's already divided into the three age system. Why do they need to divide or further divide the Stone Age again into three? Again, we're going back to what Christian Thomson Jurgensen said. It's an organ uh, it's an organized timeline. So meaning to say, sabi nga ni Jurgensen, it's based on the materials uh, that they used before. So probably John Allen Brown and John Lubbock found out that the materials used during the Paleolithic, Mesolithic, and Neolithic were all different. So they further subdivided the Stone Age into three um, divisions. Okay. So next slide. Stone periods are based on technological advancement and not on actual date ranges. So this is somewhat similar to what Jurgensen said. Stone periods are based on the technological advancement and not on actual date ranges. Because according to Jurgensen, based on the material, and then according to uh, Brown, it is now according to uh, based to based on technological advancement. Okay. So for the Paleolithic, it is also called as old stone. Mesolithic, meso-middle, middle stone. Neolithic, neo, meaning new, new stone. Okay, again, paleo, luma, ancient, old stone. Mesolithic, middle, middle stone. Neolithic, neo, new, bago, new stone. Again, old stone, middle stone, new stone. Sancha under, under stone age. Okay, don't worry about bronze and iron age kasi wala naman silang further subdivisions. Okay, again, old stone, middle stone, new stone. Paleolithic, paleo, ancient, luma, paleontology, luma, di ba? Middle stone, meso, mesolithic, neo, neolithic, neo, meaning bago, new, new stone. Okay, again, these three divisions are under stone age. Okay. Let's start first with Paleolithic period or also called as, sabi ko nga, Paleo, ancient, old stone. So, Paleolithic period or the old stone period, considered as the longest Phase. Again, under Stone Age, sabi natin kanina, it is considered as the longest age system compared to bronze and iron because of the trial error method. The same with this one. Stone Age was further divided into three. And the first division is the Paleolithic or the Old Stone period. Probably you now know the answer. Why is it considered as the longest phase? Since it is the first Division of the Stone Age where the trial and error method was used. So, lahat ng errors, lahat ng pagkakamali, lahat ng dapat iwasan, they tested that during the Paleolithic or the Old Stone period. Kaya siya considered as the longest phase. Okay? Also under Old Stone, humans were suggested to evolve from ape to homo sapiens. I'm not sure if you will agree. Humans were suggested to evolve from apes to you uh, to Homo sapiens. Pagiging tao. So from ape to Homo sapiens. Will you agree? May mag agree ba dito? Kahit halata naman. Humans were suggested to evolve from ape to Homo sapiens. Okay. According to um According to Charles Darwin, we did not actually evolve directly from apes. But we do have the common ancestor as the apes. Okay? Again, according to Charles Darwin, we did not directly evolve from apes. Okay? But we do have common ancestors with the apes. So, pareho tayo ng pinagmulan, pero we did not evolve directly. Hindi unggoy tao. Hindi unggoy tao. Okay? <laughs> Hindi ganun. Hindi unggoy tao. Okay. Next. Tools were made up, of course, stones, 
flints, bones of animals, and antlers. Antlers, the sungai. Okay. And then, individuals were considered as hunter-gatherers. Hunter, hunting animals. And then gatherers, gathering uh, food, vegetables, fruits, or herbs. Okay. And then, also under Old Stone, they used to live in small bands. When you say small bands, when you say bands, diba bands, banda, group of individuals living together or doing something together. Okay, so live in small bands. Why? Because for them, living in small bands, uh, they will benefit it. Uh, the uh, majority of the majority of them will benefit more in living in small bands because there are more individuals for you to gather resources, and at the same time, there are lesser mouth to feed. Diba? Mas medyo marami yung maghahanap ng resources, ng pagkain, ng inumin, at the same time, you have lesser mouth to feed. Diba? Very practical. So they live in small bands. They are also considered as nomadic or semi-nomadic. When you say nomadic or nomads, uh, paano ba? Parang NPA, no permanent address sa atin. Okay? Kasi nga, just like what I mentioned kanina, doon sa past slides natin, uh, they live in huts. So, once the resources are gone, they have to move to a new area or to a new location. So, they are, as a, they are either considered as nomadic or semi-nomadic. Nomadic is talagang palipat-lipat. Semi-nomadic is kung saan merong resources, they will stay in that area for a while hanggang maubos yung resources. Okay? And then, ayan, so, we have the Paleolithic or the Old Stone. It is, again, further subdivided into three. You have the Lower Paleolithic, the Middle Paleolithic, and the Upper Paleolithic. Okay? So, and dami na natin three uh, divisions. First, again, recap lang natin. We have the three-age system. We have the first one. The first one is, starts with letter S, Stone Age. The second one is, starts with letter B, the Bronze Age. The third one starts with letter I, Iron Age. Very good. Okay. And then the further subdivision of the Stone Age, we have the first one. Starts with letter P, Ancient Paleolithic. Okay. Paleolithic Age. Then the second one, we have M, Middle, Mesolithic. And then the third one, New, Bago. Diba? New Stone, Neo, Lithic, okay? And then the Paleolithic is again further subdivided into three. We have the Lower Paleolithic, the Middle Paleolithic, and the Upper Paleolithic, okay? So let's start first with the Lower Paleolithic period. So if you're going to look again, if you're going to imagine or if you're going to browse the PowerPoint, balik kayo dun sa timeline, Meaning to say, if the Stone Age was considered as the first era, then ang pinakauna or yung nasa pinakaharap ng Stone Age will be the Paleolithic. And then, yung pinakauna sa Paleolithic will be the Lower Paleolithic. Okay? So, it is considered as the Age of Human Evolution. Okay? Kung kanina we're just talking about the evolution of ape, to becoming fully human or um, becoming a homo sapien. Okay, this one, medyo nag evolve na. We're uh, slowly adapting, we're slowly evolving. Okay? So from apes, ape-like, hindi naman ape, ape-like, medyo nagiging homo erectus na tayo. From the word erect, meaning to say erect, nakatayo, di ba? So meaning to say, individuals during the lower paleolithic period, medyo direct na, maglakad, nakakatayo na. Okay? Kaya nga, Homo erectus. Okay? Also, under Lower Paleolithic, we have the development of some simple tools. We have here some examples. We have stone choppers from the word itself. It chop. It chops what? <laughs> Stones. Stone choppers. Okay? Then we have this one, the core. The core is, since this is under Stone Age. Wag na kayo magtaka bakit lahat sila is stone. Okay? 
Next one, we have the core. From the word core, yung nasa gitna. And then we have the flaky. Okay? The difference between the two, the core is yung tinabasan. The flaky is yung pinagtabasan. Again, the core is yung tinabasan, yung natira. The flaky is yung natanggal, na wala. The one being removed. Or yung pinagtabasan. Okay? So, stone choppers, the core, and the flaky. Okay, next slide. We have... Ah, that's it for the lower paleolithic. Again, for lower paleolithic, we have the Homo erectus, erect, nakakatayo. And then, we have the stone choppers, the core, and the flaky. So, those are just some of the development during the lower paleolithic. Next one, we have the middle paleolithic. Okay, for the middle paleolithic period, Meron na tayong cultural development. When we say cultural development, before, they were just living in huts or in small bands. But this time, they are starting to, what? Socialize. Diba? Nakikipag-usap. Nakikipag, ano ba? Nakikisalamuha na sa iba. Nakikipag-chismisan. Why? Diba? Why? Bakit? Para saan? For what? Again, for communication. Okay? Probably they don't know how to speak yet, but they, of course, since they are human beings, they can produce sounds. They can produce movement or gestures. So that's how they communicate. Okay? For what reason? Probably some of the members of another band or another group are telling other groups na, oh, dito maraming pagkain, dito maraming resources. Okay? Or probably don't eat that kind of plant, don't eat that kind of leaf kasi toxic yan, mamamatay ka. Okay, cultural development, which is good. Okay. Next, from the Homo erectus during the lower paleolithic, we have the Neanderthal man. Okay, look at the picture. If you are going to observe, diba? if you're going to compare, syempre naka-erect na siya. Ano yung naka-erect? Yung katawan, of course. Okay, naka-erect na yung katawan niya, ni Kuya. So we have the Neanderthal man. Another obvious difference between the Neanderthal man and the Homo erectus is that meron na silang, yes, kumot, hindi, damit. Okay? Meron na silang clothes. Okay? Compared to the Homo erectus. Kasi during the time of the Homo erectus, noong lower paleolithic, they are just what? Gathering food for survival. Sila, hindi na. Kasi nga, meron na silang cultural development. Okay? Next slide. Okay. Ayan. Another great invention. So now you know when someone asks you, kailan nagsimula ang apoy? Of course, the answer is during the Middle Paleolithic period. Diba? Very specific. Kung ayaw nila ng specific, during the Stone Age. Kung ayaw nyo ng, kung gusto nyo ng medyo specific lang, during the Paleolithic period. Kung gusto nyo ng sobrang specific, during the Middle Paleolithic period. Okay? So meaning to say, if fire was being utilized or being used during the Middle Paleolithic period, you need to say, the food that they are eating, the food that they are consuming, luto na. Okay? Luto na siya. So, yung trial and error method, medyo nagsasucceed na siya. Nawawala na siya dun sa error side. Kasi, kumbaga, successful na yung trial nila. Na, ah, pag niluto ko pala yung meat, hindi sasakit yung chan ko. Di ba? Okay, so uses fire or utilizes fire. And then, another one, bone implements for needles. When you say bone implements, again, bones of animals or um, antlers or sungai, pwede din. For needles, kasi nga, they are now, what? They are now more civilized, meaning to say they have clothes. So, kaya na nilang mag tahe. Okay. Next slide. Oh, another picture of Neanderthal man holding some spears. Sabi natin, mayroon na silang damit. Okay. May kamukha ba? Pitigan mabuti. Baka may kamukha. Baka walang, baka walang picture dyan. Salamin talaga yan. Okay. Next. The painting of the dead before the burial. Okay. Why? Why is there a reason or, you, or why is there a need to paint the dead before uh, the burial. Okay? Main reason for that is before they believe that the more colorful you are kapag ikaw ay nilibing, the happier you are in your next life. 
Okay? So, mas maganda yung color sa'yo, mas maganda yung ipininta sa'yo, the happier you are in your next life. Okay? So, they have that kind of beauty. Okay, so that's it for the middle Paleolithic. Next, we have the upper Paleolithic. Upper Paleolithic. Ayan, okay. So, we have the evolution of Homo sapiens. So, nag-start tayo kay ape going to, transcending to Homo erectus, transcending to the Neanderthal. Uh, sorry, excuse me. Transcending to the Neanderthal man. Diba? From ape-like, nakatayo na siya, homo erectus na siya, and then from the homo erectus, neanderthal na siya, may, uh, may damit na siya, and at the same time, meron na silang uh, social skills. For the upper paleolithic, we have the evolution to homo sapiens. Ganap na tao na siya. Okay? So for the upper paleolithic, again, the usage of bones, to become hooks for fishing. So, maroon na silang mga sda. And then also, again, for needles. Just like the Neanderthal man. Ayan. Let's, let's focus here, yung kanina. The cave arts or the cave paintings. The reason for this is that they are trying to tell a story. Okay? Sabi nga natin, they live in small bands. And then, it's either they live in huts, kung saan maraming resources, or... Another one is they choose to live in caves. The reason behind why they chose to live in caves rather in huts that is made of uh, light resources is, of course, kapag ikaw ay nasa kweba, let's say for example, in a mountain na nasa taas, you are well protected. Diba? So that is the reason. May option sila. Ano bang priority ko? Do I have to survive on resources or mas pipiliin ko yung safety ko? Diba? Yung safety ko na malayo ako sa intruders or sa wild animals or whatsoever. Okay? So, going back to the cave paintings, these are stories that they are trying to tell. Now, let's say, for example, or uh, we were attacked here by wild animals, by mammoths, or whatsoever. So, they're going to paint. Okay? They're going to paint, trying to tell the story. So, in case some new bands, some new nomadics or semi-nomadics move in to that particular cave, they will be aware na, ah, ah okay, kaya pala itong abutin ng wild animals. So, it's not safe here. We, we better have, uh, we need to find a new shelter. Okay? So, hindi tayo pwede dito. Lipat tayo, lipat tayo. Okay? So, that is the reason for that. Okay? Next. Ayan. We have the woman of Willendorf. The woman of Willendorf was considered as the goddess of fertility, also considered as an aphrodisiac. Because before, during the time of Upper Paleolithic, the woman of Willendorf, this particular image of the woman of Willendorf was considered to be, let's say, somewhat sexy. Okay? So, try to look at the picture. So, it's the goddess of fertility or the goddess of beauty and also considered as an aphrodisiac. Meaning to say, uh, nare-raise yung uh, need mo to have um, a sexual encounter. Okay? So, for them, the woman of Willendorf was considered uh, a goddess or very sexy. Okay? So, kung if you have the same body as the woman of Willendorf, then you're very lucky. Consider yourself very sexy. Okay? <laughs> Next slide. So, we're done with the lower, the middle, and the upper Paleolithic. So, let's have a recap. Again, the three-age system is the Stone Age, the Bronze Age, and the Iron Age. The Stone Age is further subdivided into Paleolithic, Mesolithic, Neolithic, and then Paleolithic is subdivided again into the Lower Paleolithic, the Middle Paleolithic, and the Upper Paleolithic. Okay? Next slide. So, we're done with this one. So, ito na yung na-cover natin. Okay? The Upper, the Lower, and the Middle Paleolithic. Let's now go to the second division of the Stone Age, which is Mesolithic. Meso meaning middle, nasa gitna, in between. Okay. So for Mesolithic, from Paleolithic wherein individuals were just considered as food gatherers or hunters, they are now considered as 
agriculturists or an agriculturist because they can now grow their own food. Okay? So, hindi na lang lahat hunting or gathering. Okay? So, from being sem uh, nomadic, probably some of them naging semi-nomadic or probably they um, decided to stay in an area for quite a long time. Kasi nga, they can now grow their own food. Okay, next for Mesolithic, we have the development of the microliths. The microliths are made, uh, made up of stone. So, this was carved para maging pointed siya to be used as either needles or hooks. So, those are microliths. So, that's it for Mesolithic. Okay? Sir, probably you're wondering, Sir, why is it that Mesolithic is quite short compared to the Paleolithic or the beginning of the Stone Age? Again, because of the trial and error method. So, probably they developed, they learned a lot of things while living during this era of Paleolithic and then they've adopted that during the Meso. Lithic. Okay, next, the last division of the Stone Age, we have the Neolithic. Neolithic meaning new, bago. Under the Neolithic or the New Stone, cultural and technological development based on agriculture. So, from Mesolithic, wherein they are considered now as an agriculturist, for the Neolithic or the New Stone, much more development. When it comes to the field of agriculture. So from simple farming, diba? you can now, ayan, look at the picture. From simple farming, they are now well organized. It is now a well organized system. So they have like this small community. So hindi na sila palipat-lipat. Kasi if you're going to look at the picture, the huts or the shelters are now made up of Probably, hindi na light materials kasi mas matibay na siya. Okay? And then, since they are now more aware on how bec on becoming more social between one another, meron na tayong classification system. So, based on the picture, di ba? The males are the one probably building the shelters and walls for protection. And then, the females and then some of the males are helping to uh, planting. Okay. Another picture. So they can now fish. They have statues, just like the woman of Philandor. Okay, the one that they um, ask guidance for. So it's like a small community. And this is the most important one under Neolithic, the domestication of plants and animals. Since they are now more um, smarter compared to they were before during the, uh, the Paleolithic and the Mesolithic, they have more knowledge when it comes to domesticating plants and animals such as rice, corn, beans, goats, cattle, sheep, and pigs. Okay, next, next in our timeline, so we're done with the Stone Age, so medyo mahaba si Stone Age, but next one we have the Second Age system, we have the Bronze Age. Again, if for the Stone Age, the most common material used was the stone, for the Bronze Age, the most common material used was bronze. Okay, for Bronze Age, it started when tools and weapons were made of copper or bronze. So if we're going to look at the pictures, majority were weapons. Okay, weapons. Metal extraction or also called as smelting. This is the combination of copper and tin to produce bronze. So smelting is the process of mel uh, metal extraction. Combining two, which is copper, and tin, which is bronze, which is much stronger compared to the two. And that's it for Bronze Age.
Okay. Probably, again, you're wondering, sir, why is the Bronze Age much shorter compared to the Stone Age or the subdivisions of the Stone Age? Again, it's because all of their findings, all of their observations, everything that have undergone the trial and error method, they will just uh, adopt it during the Bronze Age. And then everything about... Uh, that they found out during the Bronze Age, they will just adopt it again for the Iron Age. So, idadagdag lang yung knowledge from the Stone to the Bronze, and then from the Bronze to the Iron. Okay, for Iron Age, articles were made up of, of course, iron, again, by smelting iron ores. If we're going to look at the picture, majority of them are now using irons, as uh, for weapons, the same with bronze. Okay, why? Because during the bronze and the iron age, this is the somewhat preparatory stage for the medieval age. And as we all know, the medieval uh, medieval age is considered as the dark ages. Because there are war ang nangyari because of what? Yeah, the medieval age because of superiority, since before, they are now more skilled when it comes to socializing and also they are now considered as um, much developed agriculturists. Some of them develop this trait of obtaining more than what they need. Diba? Nag-aagawa na. Nag-aagawa ng resources, nag-aagawa ng lupa, nag-aagawa ng uh, tauhan. Okay? So, that is under the Medieval Age. But we will not discuss the Medieval Age because it is not under the Three Age system. Okay? But I do want to share this, that after the Medieval Age, we have some of the developments or inventions coming from different parts of the world. But we're going to focus more on China, or I'm going to focus more on China since they have given us tons of inventions and then the first invention is of course the paper so the paper was made up of the papyrus tree okay so again the first paper was developed in or invented in china so thank you china for that sa papel next one is can you guess what this is so this is a seismograph a seismograph will tell you if there is um uh, an earthquake that is happening okay so the process or the logic for this is kapag um nagkaroon ng earthquake magsusway yung parang bell or parang metal sa loob and then pag nagsway siya so pag, uh, the greater the, the the greater the movement of the the plates the greater yung movement ng metal dun sa loob so kapag nagbounce yung metal sa side yung ball dito sa head ng dragon will drop into the frog Okay, so it's very technical, but it's actually the first seismograph. Next, we have this one. Can you guess what this is? From the writings pa lang, no? It's obviously invented or originated from China. This is actually the first wooden clock. So, medyo malaki. Next, we have, of course, the famous wheelbarrow. Next. Explosions, firecrackers, also originated from China. And then next, the first press or printing press, also originated from China. Again, uh, probably you're going to read some other books or references. Uh, the more the more known uh, originate. Um, Founder of the printing press or inventor of the printing press was Johannes Gutenberg, but actually it originated first from China. Then we have the compass. Then, of course, the most famous one is acupuncture. Okay, so I think so. Sabi ko karina. We have the information age, which is our era now, or also known as the computerization age. So it all started because of 
this man, Johannes Gutenberg, or the development of the printing press, which started the Gutenberg Revolution. Going back to the print, uh, first printing press, this one. Okay, Johannes Gutenberg was very famous, kaya nga tayo nagkaroon ng Gutenberg Revolution. This Gutenberg Revolution revolves around how Johannes Gutenberg shared information to the locals. Okay, kasi during those time, only those who are rich or only those who are capable to buy can have information or knowledge about certain things. But because of the development of the printing press, nagkaroon ng maraming copy. So therefore, mas maraming information ang na-share or na-ibigay para sa uh, lahat. Okay? And of course, it started a revolution. Why? Of course, before, ayaw ng mga nakakaangat na yung mga below them ay may alam. Okay? Parang, mas may kaya ako, dapat mas may alam ako. So, but because of the Gutenberg Revolution, it started to change things. Na not because you cannot afford something, okay, is wala ka na rin alam. Hindi ka na matututo. The same with our education system right now, di ba? Okay. So, this is my last slide. So, my last slide, I have a quotation here. Technology alone is not enough by Steve Jobs. Technology alone is not enough by Steve Jobs. Okay? On our meeting for our conference, I'm going to ask you what are your thoughts about our first lecture? And at the same time, what are your thoughts about my last slide by Steve Jobs, which is technology alone is not enough? Okay? So that's it for my first lecture or for our first lecture. I'm going to see you on our uh, conference next week. And then make sure to watch the video. You can either watch it on YouTube or you can just download it. Okay? So, pwede nyo siyang panoorin anytime. So, hindi kayo mahaso. And then, yung mga nagtitipid for the, uh, sa data, siguro pwede tayong maki-Wi-Fi muna or whatsoever. Or I'm not sure kung magkano ang magagastos kapag nanood ng isang video sa YouTube. So, sana tayo ay makatipid. And then, that's it. Thank you and thank you for listening. And stay safe and God bless. Thank you.